Hello and welcome to my Euro predictions for 2024, located in Germany. Let's start off at Group A, and it's Germany, Hungary, Scotland, and Switzerland in Group A. Right, let's start off alphabetical order, Germany. Obviously, they do have an aging side, like the likes of Aikai, Gundogan, and Neuer. Starting to get on a bit, could that affect them? Well, they're the hosts of the tournament. They're the hosts. And looking at their group, Hungary, Switzerland, and Scotland, no offence to them, but Germany are definitely a bigger nation. They've won more, and Germany are just better, as simple as that. Surely Germany are going to top the group. I'm going Germany in first place in Group A, as probably everyone does. Now moving on to Hungary. You know what, Hungary? Last 12 games, we look at their qualification round, and whew, that's, that's some decent stuff. Undefeated in the last 12 games, so Bosley leading the squad. I don't know much about all their players, but considering they're unbeaten in the last 12, considering usually in either the World Cup or Euros, there's usually a bit of a dark horse. There's always one team that surprises everyone, and I feel like it could be hungry considering they have been undefeated in the last 12. And they did also do the double over England, and I feel like the, the, this team's going to be a dark horse. It's going to be. They're going to finish in second place in Group A. Now, Scotland and Switzerland. Honestly, they could both be in third or fourth. I do not know. I, I really couldn't put my finger on it. It's a tough one. I'm going to go Scotland. The likes of Andrew Robinson, John McGinn in there. Obviously, Switzerland. I feel like Switzerland's are a better side, though. Oh, my God. I've been torn between this. I kept on changing it. But Scotland, they're going to travel in numbers, aren't they? Hundreds of thousand fans. They're going to be up for it for the Euros. Scotland are going to push. You know what? I'm putting them in third. Sorry, Switzerland. I'm so sorry. But I am putting you in fourth. But honestly, it could be either way. Let's move on to Group B. You've got Albania, Croatia, Italy, and Spain. Some huge names in there. Some huge names. I mean... Some people call this a group of death, and it is. Three huge teams like Croatia, Italy, and Spain. Albania have been dealt dirty. I'm just going to straight away say this. Fourth place for Albania. Sorry, Albania, but you're not making out of this group. I think anyone with a logical mind... I mean, this is where Albania goes and wins the entire tournament. I mean, the chances have to be low, but they are finishing last. I think the best they can do is finish third above Croatia... That gets me on to the next point. Luka Modric's side, Croatia. I'm putting in third. But I suppose you do have a decent centre back in Gavardio. He, he's a decent player, isn't he? Doing fantastic for Manchester City. They were a bit of an, uh, an underdog and did have a good run not too long ago in one of the big competitions. But Italy and Spain, Italy obviously being the former Euros winner. Spain, they've got a good side coming into this, don't they? A young side. A young side thrilling to go and try and win this competition. They've got some great players, Spain. But Italy, I'm going to put in second. And I'm going to put Spain first. So, sorry, Albania, but you've got no chance in the group of death. Moving on to Group C, we've got Denmark, England, Serbia, and Slovenia. Now, let's start off with Denmark. Christian Eriksen, you know what? Yes, he hasn't really thrived under Manchester United. Had a few injuries here and thither. And is playing for a club that's kind of a mess. Other than the last three games, he did win the FA Cup. But yeah, does he still have it going into this Denmark side? And the thing is, I don't know whether he's actually going to be picked for this Denmark side. Rasmus Hoyland, I assume he's going to be picked. Obviously, he's a great player. And you know what? He hasn't quite took off for Man United. He's got like, what, 10 goals for Manchester United? Not too bad there, Rasmus Hoyland. I feel like the future is good, and maybe playing on a different side like Denmark, maybe he can thrive. And because of that, I feel like he could be a real danger. And Denmark, I think, can finish in second. I honestly do. Let's move on to England, and well, we should definitely be topping this group. It's definitely one of the easier groups out of them all, but we have just lost against Iceland 1-0, which is concerning. And our starting 11 was very similar to the starting 11 we would probably use in the Euros. Not quite exactly the same. Maybe because there's no Jude Bellingham and he's kind of that match winner. And he makes everyone around him perform better just by being in the squad. Maybe that was partly to the reason why we lost against Iceland. Maybe he could have helped and he probably would have helped. But I assume he was just resting him. I don't think there is any huge injuries with Jude Bellingham. I hope. But that is concerning. It's a classic Gareth Southgate scoreline, 1-0 or 0-0. You know, he sit backs defensive. The only reason why I don't think we'll win this tournament is maybe the manager. But if you do look, we have been improving. 
We have been improving since Gareth Southgate came in. And yes, maybe we could have improved quicker under a different manager, but there are improvements. And you know what, Gareth Southgate? He's done something good. He has picked a very good side. I'm very happy with the pick. It's very different. It's very brave to the side that he normally picks for each international tournament. And I'm very, very happy about that. And our squad looks good. It's only a friendly against Iceland. I know they're like the 72nd ranked side in all of the international teams. I feel like we'll get two draws in this group. Okay, and we'll win one. We'll win against Slovenia, and we'll probably draw like 0-0 or 1-1. You know, classic low scoring. And against Slovenia, I feel like we only win 1-0. So I'm only going to say we're going to get around five points. But that's going to be enough to finish first. I think we're only just about going to finish first in this group by a point. It's just a style of play from Gareth Southgate. He's a nice person, but honestly, I'm not a fan of his style of play. But overall, we should be topping this group. And we can definitely go far with the side that we've got. I'm saying England in first position. And now we move on to Serbia. Alexander Mitrovic. 28 goals, is it, in Saudi Arabia? He's doing fantastic in Saudi Arabia. He did well when he was in the Premier League. He's going to be another one that's going to be threatening in that striker position. Yeah, I think Serbia has more quality over Slovenia. Slovenia obviously has Jan Oblak. So I'm going Serbia in third and Slovenia in fourth. Sorry, Slovenia, but I don't think you've, you just do not have enough quality in that side. Other than Jan Oblak, I don't really know who else you've got. Moving on to Group D, we've got Austria, France, Netherlands and Poland. And well, starting off of Austria, Netherlands and France are definitely the two favourites coming into this. And I'm going to have to put Austria last. Sorry, Austria buddies. Some people are saying they're going to be a dark horse. If you disagree with me, let me know down in the comments. Again, it's just my opinion. So take this with a pinch of salt. Again, I don't have the most knowledge on Austria and a lot of these teams as I only focus on the Premier League. I'm not I'm not like a genius when it comes to every single nation because I only really focus on the Premier League. Moving on, France. They're topping the group. Boom, first place. Yeah, I mean, France are France, aren't they? Kylian Mbappe FC. Well, not just him. They've obviously got other players as well. They're a very, very, very good side and they can easily win the tournament. One of the strongest sides along England as well. They're obviously going to finish first. Netherlands, I'm putting them second. They've also got a strong side as well. Van Dijk at the back. Van Dijk at the back. Oh, and Van de Ven. He's had a great season for Spurs. The pace and great defending. I mean, that defensive partnership, that is crazy. Those two players in that defence, I mean, they're going to be keeping clean sheet after clean sheet with that defence. And then obviously Poland in third position with Lewandowski up front. Yeah, I mean, between Poland and Austria, it's, it's just kind of like rolling a dice in my opinion. They're that even from my knowledge, the general vibes I get. But yeah, I'm quite happy there. Moving on to Group E, we've got Belgium, Romania, Slovakia and Ukraine. Okay, let's start off with Belgium. Their side is sensational. The chemistry between Kevin De Bruyne and Doku is going to be insane because obviously they both play for the same club. Doku, lightning pace. I really like Doku. Possibly my favourite player for Manchester City and obviously Kevin De Bruyne is Kevin De Bruyne. He was obviously injured for the entire half of the season for Man City. He came back. I remember his first game coming back from his injury. And he got two goal contributions against Newcastle United. Coming from 2-1 down to make it 3-2. Was the hero pretty much coming on. And he's played sensational again for the time he was there for Manchester City this season. And Belgium, look so, so good. And Lukaku, I've heard he's been absolutely killing it. Getting goals galore. So many goals. I don't know the exact stat, but I know he's absolutely killing it. Some crazy stats. Romelu Lukaku, sensational. Belgium, amazing. They're finishing first. And Romania. I know they've got the likes of Hadji. What well, I've heard, Hadji's okay. I don't know many of their players. Maybe I will, but not off the top of my head. And overall, they, they, they're, they're going to have to finish in last. I'm sorry. From what I gather, Romania aren't a huge, huge club. Fantastic they managed to get here, but at the moment, I don't see him getting past this group. We move on to Ukraine, second or third. They got the likes of Shev Shevchenko. That versatility to playing left back or cam is very good, you know. That versatility is very good, and he is a good player on his day. And then you've got Mudrik, which, yes, started a bit slow when he went to Chelsea, but in the end, he did some good performances. I feel like Ukraine does have a strong side. A stronger side, they're kind of that, in my opinion, they're that average nation 
the average nation that can always give a good shift in the tournament. And I feel like they will finish second, which means Slovakia, I'm putting you in third position. I'm quite happy with that group, you know. Moving on to group F, the last group. We've got Czech Republic, we've got Georgia, we've got Portugal, and then we've got Turkey. Right, let's start off with Czech Republic. Now, Czech Republic, I think they've got a decent side. You know, well, well, when I say decent, I feel like they're kind of the average side, I would say. A bit like Ukraine, I would say they're an average side. But I am going to put them in fourth position. Here's why. Getting on to the next reason is Georgia. Yes, everyone puts them in fourth place. And I can look an absolute mug for saying this. But I think they will finish above Czech Republic. For like their passion for football and the fact that this is the first time they've ever been in the Euros, which is fantastic, is the fact that they're going to have a bit of momentum just by them being happy they're there and they're going to straight away win against turkey but then reality will catch up to them and they'll, they'll then they'll lose the next two games i just feel like that and i feel like turkey will finish in second and evidently i'm putting georgia in third i feel like czech republic georgia and turkey i feel like they're going to all finish in three points i honestly do i feel like georgia coming in it's going to be an underdog story they're going to be passionate and they've got the likes of kavala that is literally the only player I know. I know I could sound like a mug for saying this. Turkey in second. Yeah, their fans are usually good. Their fans are very good. And, I mean, I have heard some people in the past saying they're going to be a bit of a dark horse. I don't think they will be. I think they'll get second. But I don't think they're going to last much longer than getting second in this group. Because it is an easier group compared to some of the others. And then, obviously, Portugal in first. Although Portugal did have a friendly against Croatia recently. Did lose it 2-1. But honestly, Croatia are a good team, so fair play there. And on the screen is all the group stages from A to F. So you can embrace them. Are there any silly ones like Georgia? Do you think they've got any chance of finishing in third? Do you agree with my predictions? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a good discussion about it. Moving on to next thing, the third place ranking. This isn't necessarily which team I think is better. It's depending how many points in goal difference. You know how it works. And I think Serbia will get through. I think they'll be one of the four teams to get through because I feel like they can draw against England and I feel like Georgia will get in second because I said they're all going to finish in three points in Group F and I feel like Georgia's going to go to the round of 16. I feel like the happiness and the momentum of them actually being there and the likes of Kavala carry them to round of 16, to the round of 16. I definitely sound like a mug for saying this. In third, fourth and fifth, I think all the teams there are going to have two points. In third, I'm putting Scotland, then Croatia, then Slovakia, which means Slovakia will not be making it. And Poland will finish last because I feel like Poland, in a group of Netherlands and France, they're losing both of those games. And I feel like they'll tie with Austria. And they're finishing third with one point. I'm sorry, Poland, but you don't have a chance considering Netherlands and France are in your group. But yeah, honestly, putting Slovakia in the bottom two here, it could go either way because I'm saying they're all going to be on similar points. Croatia, they might not even get two points because their group is quite hard. But I feel like they've got a very competitive side. They've shown it in the friendly when they won against Portugal. I feel like they will get through. But moving on to the round of 16. Here are the round of 16 according to my group stage predictions. And starting off Germany versus Denmark. Sorry, Denmark. But the likes of Rasmus Hoyland and Christian Eriksen, I don't think is enough with a Germany side which hasn't just got experience like Tony Cruz, Eikai Gundogan, Manuel Neuer and a bunch of others. Like they've got the likes of Musiala coming up and Wurtz. Honestly, Wurtz in that attack is going to do some fantastic stuff. Musiala as well to support him. It's going to be a fantastic squad. Tony Cruz is going to absolutely love it. And it's, it's going to be a win for Germany. They're going through to the quarterfinals. And the next game's Hungary versus Italy. Obviously, Italy being the former winners of the Euros four years ago. But a lot can change in four years. And a few of their players have retired, like Cialini. And I feel like their squad is not as good as the 2020 squad, to be honest. And compared to a lot of these teams, I don't think Italy have a chance to win the Euros. To be honest, I don't think they do. And they're facing Hungary. And we've seen it with Croatia a few years ago that teams can surprise. You, there's always one shocker, like I said earlier on in the video. And Hungary have just won 3-0 against Israel. Again, Israel isn't the best aside. They did also lose against Ireland recently, which is a bit of a concern. But I'm going to go Hungary. Why not? So Bozlai to put Hungary through to the quarterfinals. I cannot believe I'm actually putting Hungary to the quarterfinals. Is this mad or has a lot of people done this? I don't really know, but 
Anyways, moving on to the next. It is Spain versus Scotland. Am I actually going to say Scotland to beat Spain? Spain in the last World Cup didn't do too bad, but not the greatest. But I feel like their squad is thriving now. I think their squad looks really, really good. A lot of Barcelona players in that squad. David Ryan, the goalkeeper position, should be able to keep this game with a clean sheet. And I feel like Scotland don't think you have enough to beat Spain. Spain looking too good. They're advancing to the quarterfinals. The next one, England versus Georgia. Very similar flags, but England definitely going to win this. I don't care that we lost to Iceland. We're 100% going to win this. Sorry, Georgia. This is where your reign ends. And England advance to the quarterfinals. The next one being Portugal versus Serbia. Serbia, you know what? Let's not underestimate Serbia. The likes of Alexander Mitrovic, like I said, they don't have a bad squad. And Savic, in history, he hasn't been too bad as well. But it's not enough, in my opinion, to beat the likes of Portugal. Obviously, Ronaldo's sides. And a question for you. Do you think Ronaldo can get into that starting eleven, Or do you think he'll be more of a bench warmer and he'll come off the bench to try and do something? In my opinion, I think he could realistically get into the starting eleven Because I know he's playing in Saudi Arabia. And he has been getting goals and goals and goals. And I know it is a worse league, but I still feel like if he was in, like, La Liga, I still feel like he could get, like, 15, 18, or maybe even 20 goals. I still feel like he's a world-class player. And I don't see why he wouldn't get into the starting eleven. And maybe not all the time. Maybe it's a bit of a rotation one with Ronaldo. That's my thoughts on it. Let me know your thoughts down below. So I'll be advancing Portugal to the quarterfinals of the Euro 2024. And the next game is Netherlands versus Ukraine. Netherlands are winning this. Sorry, Ukraine, but Netherlands. Really looking forward to what Netherlands can do, and they're gonna beat Ukraine and advance to the quarterfinals. Moving on to the next game, it's Belgium versus Croatia. You know what, this one's gonna be a hard one to predict, you know. Belgium versus Croatia is gonna be very hard. I feel like Croatia does have some good talents, don't they? Cavalio at the back, Luka Modric in the middle with Kovacic. But they're facing Belgium, which Lukaku, yes, hasn't had the great season for his club, but he has scored 14 goals in the qualifiers in the Euros. And that's some good signs. And we know what Lukaku's made of. The likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Doku's pace, I think, will beat Croatia. And Belgium will just about go through against Croatia. But that's almost a 50-50 coin toss. But I feel like Belgium just got a bit more quality. And then we'll go through to the quarterfinals. And the next one is France versus Turkey. I'm just going to get this one over and done with. France will advance to the quarterfinals. No doubt about it. And moving on to the quarterfinals, it's Spain versus Germany. Such a hard one to predict. A Germany side, which, like I said, is getting on a bit. A Spain side, which is starting to euthanize. If that's the word, they're starting to get younger. And they're starting to build a great structure for the future. And I think Spain, in a few years' time, could definitely win the World Cup or Euros. But in this competition, Germany are the hosts. And I think they do have a threatening side coming into this. I think the balance of experienced players and some good young players are really a good balance. Especially that of the hosts. And because of the hosts, because I feel like they've got a slightly bit better quality than Spain... I know Spain do have Roger in the middle. Arguably the best midfielder in the world, maybe. Yeah, Spain look good. But I am going to edge the hosts, Germany. Just about a tinsy wincy bit. Going to edge Germany to advance the semi-finals. And it's Portugal versus Netherlands. And you know what? This one is a coin toss. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go Portugal. Just about. It's very hard to predict. For like Portugal, you know, Bruno Fernandes, he's shown his quality in Manchester United. You've got Cancelo at the back there. You've got Bernardo Silva. You know, you've got some good names in that side. You've got Ruben Diaz. That is sensational. I think Portugal got a really, really good side and they will advance against Netherlands. And the next one is Belgium versus France. You know, this is going to be an interesting one. But France, I think, are in the top two in terms of quality and they will. They will beat Belgium. Sorry, Belgium. This is where we say toodle pip for you. But France is advancing to the semi-finals. Oh, well, there's only one more game. England versus Hungary in the quarterfinals. Hungary making all the way to the quarterfinals. I think it is possible. Can they do it again like they did back in 2022 in the Nations League when they did the double over us? No. I think we've got it. I don't care about Iceland. If any chance for England to make it really far in terms of history this year is the one it is the one and they will advance to the semi-finals quite comfortably against hungary and that means the semi-finals are germany versus portugal and france versus england germany versus portugal to start off with i'm gonna advance the hosts to the final i think they will make it to the final and moving on to this game which i'm dreading the most because if this actually happens 
I don't want to repeat. You know who I'm talking about. The main man up top. Is Harry Kane a curse of all trophies, including international? Because he went to the Bundesliga and Bayern Munich didn't win a trophy, which is very rare. Do I think we can get to the final? You know what? I don't want to be biased. Originally, I've done multiple different predictions. I've done it multiple times thinking about it. At one point, I put Portugal to win it. At one point, I put France to win it. At one point, I put Spain to win it. But I'm really coming to the conclusion that England has a chance to go to the final. Has the chance to go to the final. And when England played France, I thought we, we definitely had a chance. It could have gone either way. And like when we faced Italy, we won the final last year in the Euros. We're improving, we're improving. And I think we've got a chance against France. I know they've got the likes of Kylian and Mbappe up front. And it's a scary side. But I feel like this is the best side we've ever got. I think this is the best chance if we're going to win something. And it's going to be now. Let's go. We're advancing to the finals. And in the final, Germany versus England. I'm going England. I feel like we've got a better side than Germany. And there's actually a crazy stat. It probably got no relevance to what's actually going to happen. 100% doesn't. There's nothing to do with players or managers. The last time the host of a national tournament won it was back in 1986. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm talking absolute gibberish. But could that play a factor in? Probably not, but I'm going to say it will, and that will help England win the Euros. We've got a great side. Gareth Selke has picked a very good side. Although Lewis Dunk is a bit, you know, where's Jared Baron Branthwaite? Where's Tawoski? Lewis Dunk, yes, has been all right. Maybe uh, I, I'm a bit confused about that one. But other than that, I'm quite happy with the side that Gareth Southgate's picked. I'm quite happy with everything. You can call me biased or anything. But quite frankly, I wouldn't care because I know we're going to win it. I know we will win it. Oh. Oh no. Oh.